So 8.3, we're getting back into proofs, but this time we're proving triangles to be similar. Okay, so recall, similar triangles have the same what, but not necessarily the same what. So they have to have the same what? Shape, but not necessarily the same size. Okay, the way to prove triangles similar is by really angle, 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 three angles, A, 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 but do you all remember if you have, so if we have two triangles, you don't have to write any of this down. If you have two triangles, A, B, C, and triangle D, E, F, and I tell you that angle A is congruent to angle D, and I tell you angle C is congruent to angle F. If I have two out of the three pairs of corresponding <coughs> angles congruent, will the third pair of angles also be congruent? Yeah, by which theorem? Who remembers the name of it? Angle, angle, angle. No choice. The no choice theorem. It would be the no choice theorem would get the third pair. So technically, the way to prove triangles to be similar is by angle, angle, angle. Three angles, right? But the mathematicians are like, well, if you have two out of the three angles congruent, won't we always have the last pair of angles congruent? So angle, angle, two sets of angles is enough to prove the triangles to be similar. Okay, so for example, if I tell you that angle A is congruent to angle D, and angle B is congruent to angle E, we can conclude that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, and the reason would be angle angle AA. All right, so let's try a proof. We want to prove triangle BCD. So that's this triangle. We want to prove to be similar to triangle FED, this triangle. Hey, we are told that AC is congruent to AE and angle CBD, this angle up by B, which I'll call angle 1, is congruent to angle EFD, which I'll call angle 2. Now, in order to prove the two triangles similar, do we all agree it is angle, angle? We need two sets of angles. How many pairs of angles do we have right now? One. But look at the big triangle, CAE. Do we all see that big triangle? If the legs of that triangle are congruent, what else can we conclude? That the base angles are also congruent. So I can go step number two. And I can say angle C is congruent to angle E. And the reason's going to be if legs, then base angles. Do we now have enough to say these triangles are similar? Absolutely. Step number three, triangle B, C, D. Now, be careful you don't put congruent. Similar is just the squiggly, is similar to triangle DFE, angle, angle. That's it. Easy peasy. In the textbook, you might see angle, angle, similar. It's fine. It's the same thing. You could put angle, angle. You could put angle, angle, similar. It doesn't matter. Hey, you all try number two on your own.
actually try the next two on your own. I feel confident you could do this. Now we'll have people come up and explain what they did. First, you have to say that they're right angles like that with altitude, then they're congruent <coughs> because all right angles are congruent. <laughs> So these are right angles because of that without this food. So you can't say that they're congruent now. I wish you declare them right angles. Then I can say they're all congruent. Then you can say they're all congruent. Exactly. And you must declare the right angles before you say that they're congruent. Thumped you. You guys doing good. over number two with you. So for number two, the first thing I'm going to do is highlight what we're trying to prove to be similar. So we want to prove triangle NRT, which I'm shading in in yellow. We want to prove that to be similar to triangle NPS, which I'm outlining in green. So our focus is on these two triangles. Now they're telling us that SP is an altitude to NR. Now I hope you remember, what does an altitude make? Right angles. So these two angles will be right angles. But then it also says that RT is an altitude to NS. So that means these two angles are right angles. So in step number two, I need to declare my right angles. So angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four are right angles. Now, if you had the foresight to see that you only needed two of these, you only needed angle two and angle three, you did not need to declare all four of them if you were able to see that in advance. And this is def of altitude. Now, 
after you declare right angles, now you say that they're congruent. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, congruent to angle 3, congruent to angle 4, and the reason will be right angles are congruent. Okay, so now if you look at the two triangles, the yellow triangle has a main angle three, a vertex angle three, that's a right angle. The green triangle has main vertex angle angle two as a right angle. That counts as only one pair of angles. One and four do not help us at all. One and four do not help us at all. So I only have one pair of angles. Does anybody see another angle? Max? They share the same angle N. You got it. That angle N, look at that angle N in the yellow triangle. Isn't it the same exact angle N in the green triangle? So that's reflexive. So I can now say angle N congruent to angle N reflexive. And then we can say that our triangles are similar. So triangle NRT is similar to triangle NSP, and our reason is AA, angle, angle. All right, if you haven't already done so, take another couple minutes, finish up number three, and I think we can have somebody come and explain this one. I feel confident you all can do this one. They're not main angled in the triangle. So remember, they have to be corner angles to count. They're swimming in the middle of the triangle. Right, so it's not being in the middle. That's not the middle. So, it's not the middle. 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 It's not the So you can use the properties of the parallelogram to help you. You'll need to use the properties of the parallelogram to help you. There's no way around it. Oh, okay, yep, yeah, but it's extended, so you can still say it. Guys, I can see where there's a hiccup. Um, so you guys are saying, like, okay, well, DC and AB are parallel, but isn't A, um, isn't BE just an extension of AB? Yeah. So you can just call them lines. You can say line DC and line AB are parallel, and that means they'll extend. That was a very good point, Max.
anybody want to come and teach this to the class? Show them how you did it. Ready? Scion. Scion wants to. Scion. Nice. Scion. Sounds like Libby knows what she's doing. Do you want to do you do teach us? I didn't finish it, but I think I know how to Okay, go for it. Yeah, maybe. I know you have no, to come no, up and write. Uh, Wait, like write it? Yeah. For the team. There you got this. Libby taking one for the team. Wait, do I use like this computer? You use my computer and my little pen on the side there. I have really bad handwriting, but. Um, okay, so the first one. Oh, I kind of forget what I did, but. Oh. Uh, Oh yeah, I said that DC is parallel to AB. Yep, and now this makes my hand look good. Can you call them lines to show that uh, AB is going to extend to put line symbols over them? Yeah, I did. It kind of blended in. Blended I think in. yeah, there. But so those are segments. Lines have Oh. Oh, sorry. I messed that up. There we go. Yep, we're going to put the line symbols over and to then show that AB is extending to AB. And then, um, oh, that's, uh, def of parallelogram. Oh, no, there's no def. Parallelogram yields. Oh, yeah, sorry. Parallelogram yields, um, wait, where's the eraser? It's all the way top left. Oh, I see. Parallelogram yields. Parallelogram yields opposite, um, sides parallel. Parallel. And then, and I said, um, angle two is congruent to angle one. And, um, parallel lines yield alternate interior angles congruent. And then, wait, I forget what I said. Oh, yeah, because I'm trying to, like, prove, like, these big tri this big triangle with, like, the little one. So um, no, you're oh, wait. To prove triangle BFE. <laughs> Guys, I don't think I know what I'm doing. No, 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 you got it. Erase that. Okay. All right, highlight in yellow. Highlight in yellow. Highlight in yellow. Okay, Yep, we're trying to prove triangle BF is similar, highlighting green now, to DCF. So those two triangles similar. Okay. You already have one angle. All you need is one Oh, one. yeah. Oh, wait, isn't, aren't those, like, vertical angles? There you go, you got it. So then, that's angle three and four. And then they're similar because angle, angle. Perpendicular to BD. Oscar? Um, so the other proof. Could sure. You, um, also do uh, like alternate interior angles for the, uh, for the other angle? Absolutely. So Oscar's going back, going back to, where was it? This one. He's saying, can we do this Z? Yeah. 
yeah. and get um, like five and six congruent instead of the vertical angles. Yeah. Absolutely. And then it would have been in the same step as number three. Okay. Absolutely would have worked. Okay, number four. So it says given that AT is perpendicular to BD, do we agree that if AT is perpendicular to BD, let's call these angles one and angle two, can I conclude that angle one and angle two are right angles? Yes. And then it's also telling us that angle B is congruent to angle D. And my question for you is, are these triangles similar? Explain. Oscar? Yeah. Yes, why? You got it. Yeah, they're they're similar by angle angle. Hey, because these two triangles are similar, let's redraw them so they're not connected. This is A T B and here is O T D. We know that BT is 12, TD is 9, angle B is congruent to angle D, angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. And now, do we all agree that O to T, the segment right here, is 15? But now, A to T, A to T is not X, AO is X. And OT is 15. What's AT? How would I represent A to T? Vincent? You got it. Isn't A to T an X and then a 15? That's not 15X. What is that? 15 plus X or X plus 15. Because these two triangles are similar, aren't their sides in proportion? So when I say to find X, we need to make a proportion. Can somebody come up with a proportion for me? Looking at our two similar triangles. Vincent thinks he knows, nobody else. Come on, guys. We just did a whole day on this. Daniela. Good. We can make a proportion. We can do small triangle over big triangle, right? Isn't this what we were doing yesterday? So if we're doing small triangle over big triangle, we start off with the two sides that have numbers. So we'll start off with 9 over 12, and then we're going to have the small triangles 15. What's the corresponding side? to the small uh, of the bigger triangle. Wouldn't that be x plus 15? Before I cross multiply, can I simplify 9 over 12? Absolutely. We're going to get 3 over 4 is equal to 15 over x plus 15. Algebra 1 question for you. Can I do this? Cancel out those 15s. Excellent. This is a huge Algebra 1 mistake. Why am I not allowed to cancel out those 15s? Julia. You got it, because this is attached with, an, with x. This has that plus sign. The minute you go from a monomial one term to a binomial or bigger two terms, adding pluses or minus signs, you cannot cancel out through that plus sign. All right, so now we cross multiply, and I'm going to get 3 times the quantity of x plus 15 is equal to 4 times 15. I'm going to bring it up here, distribute in that 3, so now we get 3x plus 45 is equal to 60. 3x equals 15, so x is equal to 5. It just said find x, right? So we are done. Okay, so now I'm asking, are these, oh, given, sorry, given BC is parallel to DE. So those two are parallel. Are these triangles similar? The triangles I'm talking about are the only two triangles there. So triangle BAC, and what's the other triangle? Max? 
you got it, D-A-E. I want to know, are these triangles similar? Oops. Well, using the parallel lines, right? Using the parallel lines, I can find an F. Do you all see that upside down F? And if the arms of the F are parallel, are the armpits congruent? Yeah, so I can call these angles one and two. I can say angle one's congruent to angle two. Is there an F on the other side also? Yeah, there is an F on the other side. Since there's an F on the other side right here, can I call those three and four? Yes. And isn't there also, even though we don't need this, isn't angle A reflexive? Isn't angle A the same angle in both triangles? Yeah. So are these triangles similar? Mm -hmm. Yes, by which method? Yeah. Angle, angle. So are these triangles similar? Yes by angle angle all right now we want to find x how are we going to find x we need to set up a what a proportion before i set up my proportion i'm going to redraw the two triangles so they're not attached so i have triangle b a c and then i have my bigger triangle d a e BC is 24. Oh, no, BC is not 24. BC is X. DE is 24. AC is 2. How long is AE? A, you got it. All right, so how do we want to do this? Small over big or big over small? Sure, small triangle over big triangle. Since we're doing small triangle over big triangle, somebody set up the first ratio, the first fraction for me. Liv? It is 2 over 8. Can somebody now set up the other fraction for me, Max? X over 24. We did small over big for both fractions. Before I cross multiply, can I simplify 2 over 8? Absolutely, we're going to get 1 fourth equals x over 24. Cross multiply, we get 4x equals 24, so x will equal 6. Said find x, we found x. All right, la oh, two more questions. Anybody still copying this one down? We're okay? All right. Nate is 8 feet from a lamppost that is 15 feet high. If Nate is 5 feet tall, how long is his shadow? All right. The hardest part of this is setting up your diagram. The hardest part of this is setting up your diagram. So there's, um, there's two figures right here. Which two figures that we're drawing? Julia? Good. Do not get fancy here. I'm going to draw my lamppost. Here's the light. Okay, and we could write lamppost. And then there's going to be Nate. Nate is just a stick. Here's Nate. And for Nate. Okay. Now it says Nate is eight feet from the lamppost. Doesn't that mean from here to here, the lamppost to Nate, this distance is eight? Do we agree? Okay, so we're going to draw that. From, we're going to connect that. Here to here is eight. Okay, it says eight is eight feet from the lamppost. We got it. Check. That is 15 feet high. What is 15 feet high? The lamppost is 15 feet high. If Nate is five foot tall, five feet tall, what am I labeling now? Five. Nate. Nate is five feet tall. There's his height. How long is his shadow? 
Well, now, if the light is here and this is me, where would his shadow go? To the ground. On the ground in front, right? In front of this blue stick. <clears throat> so the shadow would be here. Do we agree? Yeah. Okay, what we're going to do now is from the end of the shadow to the lamppost, we're going to close this up to make tri a triangle. Whoa. I lost Nate. No. Nate, no. Technically, how many triangles do I have? One. No. Two. two. I have two triangles, and this is huge. I have the big triangle from the lamppost till the end of the shadow, but don't I also have the Nate triangle? Yeah. We have two triangles, and I will tell you, these two triangles are similar. Why are these two triangles similar? Anytime you're standing with the ground, what kind of angle am I making? A, night, a right angle. So that means Nate is making a right angle with the ground. What else? The lamppost is also making a right angle with the ground. That's a one pair of angles. For these triangles to be similar, we need another pair. Simon. The pair that they're sharing. Good. At the end of the shadow, that reflexive angle. Do we all see this? Yes? Awesome. All right. So now, um, what do we ask to find? How long is his shadow? Can I call that X? Called his shadow X. Before we set up our proportion, I need to redraw the triangles. Before I set up the proportion, I need to redraw the triangles. So I'm going to have the lamppost triangle, which is the big one. That's the lamppost triangle. This is 15. What is the base of the lamppost? Don't tell me eight, the base of this lamppost triangle. It is not eight. Michael? 8 plus x. So that's the lamppost triangle. And then I have the Nate triangle. So Nate is 5 feet tall. And then what's the length of his base? x. You got it. Now that we've set up the two triangles, can we now set up the proportion to solve? Absolutely. Um, do we want lamppost over Nate or Nate over lamppost? Sure, lamppost over Nate. We'll stay consistent with this. Lamppost triangle over Nate triangle. This is the Nate triangle, if you guys didn't realize yet. There's the Nate triangle. Okay, somebody set up my first fraction for me. My first ratio. Oscar? 15 over 5. You got it. All right, somebody who's not Oscar set up the next um, ratio for me. Michael? 8 plus x over x. Have I lost anybody? Yes, who? Scion, Scion, you're doing other work for another class. Oh, All right, anybody paying attention, not following along? Max? Um, you could have done little triangle over big triangle. It's whatever you wanted. Um, they just said lamppost over Nate, so it doesn't matter as long as you stay consistent once you decide. Any other questions for me? All right, before I cross multiply, what am I going to tell you to do? Simplify. Divide by 5. We are 3 over 1 equals 8 plus x over x. Cross multiply, we get 3x equals 1 times the quantity of 8 plus x. 1 times anything is just itself, right? So now this is 3x equals 8 plus x. I'm going to subtract the x. So we get 2x equals 8. So what is x? 4. four. What does 4 represent? The shadow. the shadow. You got it. Sorry. 
Yes. Okay. So now, number eight, we're given that, this is a question from yesterday, A, B, C, D is similar to V, W, X, Y, Z, um, and the perimeter of A, B, C, D is 40. All right, before, we want to find the perimeter of W, X, Y, Z, so I'll call that X, P equals X. All right, before I do this, before I set up my proportion, I need to figure out which sides correspond to each other. So we do that by the letters. So AB corresponds to VW. So AB, VW. BC corresponds to WX. BC, WX. Uh, CD corresponds to XY. And then we'll have, um, running out of colors here, DE corresponds to YZ. And the last one you pair is the first and the last letter, VAE corresponds to VZ. All right, so now we want to find the perimeter. Well, remember, if the figures are similar, the ratio of their sides is the same as their ratio of perimeters. So am I able to solve for X by making a proportion? Yes. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set up my proportion. Do you guys want um, big over small or small over big? What do you want? All right, big pentagon, I'll call it pent over small pentagon. All right, so tell me the first fraction using the big pentagon side over the small pentagon side. What's the first ratio? Okay, Jenna? Eight over two. Eight over two. And then we're going to use the perimeters. So we're going to say the big pentagon perimeter is 40, the small pentagon perimeter, perimeter is X. Simplify down, we're 4 over 1 equals 40 over x. Cross multiply, 4x equals 40, so x will equal 10. All right, we are done for the week.